so I was sitting at lunch with this guy, Jake. Now, Jake's a pretty smart dude, but I thought I had a question that could stump him. Earlier that day, I had seen this list of seemingly unanswerable questions, with the one at the very top being, what is the opposite of a duck? Think about it, what is the opposite of a duck? A goose? The word duck spelled backwards? I didn't have a single clue. When I asked Jake, he simply said, when you break it down to its smallest possible level, the opposite of a duck is an anti-duck made completely out of antimatter. This blew my mind. I not only knew the answer to one of the world's most unanswerable questions, but I also found out about antimatter, a topic that I wouldn't be able to stop thinking about in the months to come. You see, back in 1928, there was this British physicist named Paul Dirac who derived something he called the Dirac equation in order to relate many aspects of electron behavior. Looks complicated, I know, but Dirac decided to make things even more complicated by re-expressing the equation to solve for energy. This posed a problem. The new equation gave two solutions, ones for both positive and negative energy. Dirac was a smart cookie and knew that having negative energy was impossible. He theorized that one of the ways to explain these results was the fact that there exists electrons that have positive charge instead of the usual negative. Almost all matter is composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. If we break this owl down here into a super, super small level, we'll see that it's made out of tons and tons of tiny little iron molecules. Each of these molecules have 26 positively charged protons in their nucleus, alongside chargeless neutrons and 26 negatively charged electrons flying around randomly. But let's say I have this other owl, and the electrons on its molecules are positively charged. The protons are different as well, and they're negatively charged now. These are called positrons and antiprotons and are what make this owl an anti-owl. An owl that may seem normal, but is actually composed entirely out of antimatter. But why is it that we have never detected an anti-owl flying around, and for that matter, why can't there be anti-ducks that swim in an anti-pond? Due to charge symmetry of the standard model of physics, the Big Bang should have created the same amount of antimatter as it did matter. However, antimatter has been found to be exceedingly rare. To be honest, we still don't know why antimatter isn't all around us. There have been some theories proposed, but no one has a solid answer. Let's do an experiment. In one hand, I have normal duck Joe, and in the other, antimatter Martha. Now, let's see what happens when we bring Joe. Don't let the ducks touch. Who are you? I'm you from the future. When a particle interacts with its corresponding antiparticle, there's a chance of annihilation. Due to the law of conservation of energy, all that lost mass goes into kinetic energy. Now, with an e equals mc squared with the average weight of a duck, we get 180 quadrillion joules, which means a duck anti-duck explosion is like 3,000 atomic bombs going off. Okay, thanks for telling me, but have you seen Joe and Martha?